Hello world and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at JPEG files and how we can add transparency. So the first thing you're going to need is a little application I'm going to be using called paint.net. Um, to get that, one of the easiest ways is to go to ninite.com. N-I-N-I-T-E dot com. It uses these checkboxes so you can download multiple programs at once. It's very useful if you're trying to set up a bunch of new computers at once or, or if you're just setting up a new computer and you want to get all your applications in one place instead of having to go to a million different websites. For this demonstration though, we're just going to be selecting paint.net and we're going to say get your Ninite. And from here, we're going to go ahead and click save. You can name it whatever you want and save it wherever you want. I'm just going to put it in downloads. Let that download for a second. It's already completed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and open up my downloads folder. And you'll see here there's the ninitepaint.net installer. You're going to double click on that and let it do its thing. That's just going to go through. It's going to download and install the program automatically. I'm going to speed this up and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, looks like we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close. Now I'm going to be opening this file called RTT. This is what I'm going to be working with. Now, as you can see, my background is completely black. I want to change that. This RTT image, though, is a JPEG file, which does not support transparency. So you see, if you try to set it as your background, it doesn't look so good. You can rescale it and do all kinds of different things with it, but it just doesn't look quite as smooth as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and right click it. I'm going to select open with. I'm going to open it with paint.net. So first you'll notice that the image itself is the wrong size. It's a little bit too long and it's not square. It doesn't look like a monitor at all. So first I'm going to go over here to the left and select the, the selection tool. And now I'm going to highlight the image in a nice square box. Just like that. And I head up to image and I'm going to crop it to selection. That'll give us a nice area to work with. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the canvas size. What this is going to do is it's going to adjust the background of this image to be the same size as the resolution of your monitor. So in my case, it's going to be 1080p or 1920 by 1080 pixels. You can look online to see what the resolution of your monitor is. And while you're at it, make sure that this little checkbox maintain aspect ratio is disabled. Otherwise, it will not fit just right. So as you can see, now the canvas is about the right size of what we want, but the logo is in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to the top and I'm going to select rulers. And I'm going to select my image again. Now I'm going to get my move selected pixels tool, which is this little blue arrow here. And I'm going to move the logo to about the center. And you can see up on the top, you can measure it to be exactly centered. I'm not going to do it perfectly. I'm just going to eyeball it this time, just for the sake of the video. Once I get it to look about right, I'm going to leave it. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add transparency to this JPEG file. Now what transparency does is it lets you overlay images on top of other images. So it sort of, it, it cuts out all the parts of the image that are white so that way you have like a see-through image that you can overlay onto a background. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to select the magic wand tool. And I'm going to select something white. All right, now as you can see, it selected quite a bit of the image. That checker box over here on the left means that it is already transparent in that area. But as you can see, the rest of the JPEG image, all of the white is not transparent yet. So after I've selected everything with my magic tool, now I'm going to look at the pixels and see if it's selected everything pretty well. Now it usually does a fairly good job, but sometimes if you do not edit this, you'll notice little white flecks and stuff all over your image and it doesn't look good. So it's better to fine tune it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control on your keyboard and I'm going to roll the mouse wheel forward to zoom in until I get a good look at the pixels of this image. Now, as you can see, there's some of the gray there that's, that's just a little off-white that is not selected in this. And that means that when you delete the white in the background, there is going to be some white little pixels there that'll look bad on your image. So I'm going to adjust the tolerance up here on the top, and that will allow me to select more of the image. 
I think about 90% is about right because it's it's over into the black. Now if you go a little too high, like I think I may have done here, um, it'll cut out a little bit of the black too and it'll make the image look a little pixely. So you might want to tone it down just a little bit less than I did, but it's, it's not going to notice that much in this image. But you're not going to notice it that much. It's sort of a fine balance. You can play with it a little bit. So once I get my selection, I'm going to hold control and zoom out with the mouse wheel. Now you'll notice that all of the image is selected, including the checkerboard area, the blank area. So now what you can do is you can either paint the whole thing with the paint bucket tool or what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the eraser tool and just erase the background. And that'll make everything transparent. So I'm going to set the hardness to 100%. Get my brush size big. I'm just going to delete that whole background there. And that's how you can get rid of a white background on a JPEG file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit more and I'm going to build a little gradient here so I can make a nice background. I'm going to make it gray and black. Click right here in the middle and drag and it'll create me a nice little gradient. I'm going to just click off here and there you go. That's going to be my background. I'm going to go to file and hit save as. And I'm going to select PNG because that kind of file supports transparency. You can save it as other types of files as well, like a TIFF image if you want it to be lossless so none of the quality is, is diminished or there's other options as well, but I'm not going to go into that today. PNG will serve my purposes just fine. And I'm going to click save. I'm going to leave everything on auto and hit save. Minimize this real quick and I'm going to go to my PNG file. You can see right there. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to set it as desktop background. And there you have it. It's perfect. Fits where I want it to and it looks professional. Now before we end the video, I'm going to go back to my image here and I'm going to show you how to remove white backgrounds from within the middle of the image. The same way as before, all you have to do is grab your magic wand, select the white part. If you want to select more than one point, you can hold control and I can select the insides of these letters as well. And now whenever I run my eraser over it, it'll delete only that section. You can play with the tolerances here too. I'm just going to leave it as is because it worked pretty well the first time. I'm going to click my eraser, delete. And there you go. You have transparency in the middle of your image as well. So now if you wanted to, you could add an extra layer to the image. Like this, if you click add a layer down here, I can add a little second layer. And from there, I can change the background of that layer to something different. Let's say I wanted it to be gray, I could turn it gray. And move that layer down. And now you can see in the middle where it was white, it is now gray. Or I could also change that color to blue in the background. You could even layer a texture in there if you wanted it to be... Uh, something interesting like a marble or something like that. So there's lots of different options of what you can do here. All right, well, that's it for the video at the moment. I'm not going to save this because I already did earlier. Um, stick around for more videos and thanks for watching.